Hey, so in this video, we're going to try to prove Coulomb's law, which is a law that allows us to calculate the force of attraction or repulsion between multiple point charges. And we're going to do so using Maxwell's first equation, which is Gauss's law for electrostatic fields. And that is this one over here. So first things first with this version of Gauss's law, we need to find a Gaussian surface to integrate over. So that's just a surface we need to pick. It could be a potato, um, a cube, a donut, any surface in three-dimensional space. To make our life easier, we are going to choose a spherical surface. Um, the reason we've chosen a spherical surface is, say, if this is our point charge, um, this purple sphere spherical surface wraps around it and the point charge is at the center of the sphere and we know that the electric field lines from the sphere radiate um, outwards so they're, they're all radial so that means they form a right angle with the surface of the sphere so let's chop up a spherical surface into many many tiny pieces that are almost a square and let's call let's say that each uh, piece has area da so we can represent each piece using a vector da where the length of the vector is equal to the area it represents so that's da and the direction of the vector is perpendicular to the area it represents so even though this piece would be curved if you take a really really tiny piece of it it would be flat so now if we compare this da with the electric field vector via dot product we are taking the dot product of width so that would be e um e and da would actually lie on top of each other so this vector e would be parallel to da and the only reason e is parallel to da is because we chose a spherical surface and the electric field is spherically symmetric so that double integral actually simplifies a bit so it'll turn into the double the double integral over the closed surface. So we're doing the dot product of E and DA. Well, because they're parallel, the dot product is just equal to the product of their magnitudes. So that would be equal to E times DA. And that's equal to the enclosed charge, which we'll call Q1, divided by epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space for electric fields. So let's just call our charge here Q1. Now, um, from experimental observations of an electric field, we've noticed that no matter what, where we are in the field, if we're at the same distance away from um, the point charge at the center of the field, the electric field we experience is the same. So electric fields are spherically symmetric. They don't, they don't depend on your angle with the charge and so on. So if we're here or here or here or here, we're all the same distance away from the center of the sphere. So we're all, let's say, R away from the um, center of the sphere. We'll all experience the same charge. So because of that symmetry, we can say that E does not depend on A. So they don't depend on each other. So um, in this integral, E is essentially a constant because we're integrating over a fixed area. We're not changing the shape of our area. So we can take E out of our double integral because it's a constant and we're left with the um, double integral of, well, it's not nothing, it's actually 1 times dA um, over the closed surface. And because dA is a sphere, this would just be equal to the surface area of the sphere. So that's equal to 4 pi r squared times E. and by Gauss's law, that's equal to Q1 over epsilon naught. So now we're getting something a bit familiar to Coulomb's law. Um, let's rearrange for E. So we know that E is equal to Q1 over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. Um, now we're almost there at Coulomb's law. What we just need to remember is um, this r we've chosen represents the distance or displacement of our of our test charge from q1 so we can actually call this r a vector and its its direction is radial and its length is equal to 
um, the radius of the sphere. Okay, so its length is r. So now we can find f using the formula f equals to the electric field strength times our test charge, which we will call q2. So we get f is equal to e, so that's q1 over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught times q2. So now this looks like Coulomb's law, but remember Coulomb's law is a vector equation, um, which we can tell from the characters in bold. So um, to transform this into a vector equation, well, um, we know what the magnitude of f is, we just need its direction, and we can find, and its direction is given by r, but r, we can't just stick r in over here, we can't do that, because r has magnitude itself. Um, it would be helpful if we could find a vector in the same direction as r, but with a magnitude of 1, because multiplying by 1 won't affect our value of f. So that's where unit vectors come in. r cap is a unit vector with the same direction as r, but just with a length of 1, so its length is 1. So if this is our vector r, r cap would look like this, and we just have a length of 1. So, instead of putting r in, we can get a vector equation for f if we put in r cap. So that's q1, q2 over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught times r cap. And that is cool. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any suggestions on what I should tackle next, leave a comment below.